People always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right, on today's episode, we have a real estate mogul, a financial advisor, a public speaker, and an all-around great guy. It's Peter Wagner. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm wonderful. Well, welcome to everybody to my seminar on the seven building blocks of success. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my <laughs> my history with, uh, with growing up and uh, learning about how to do things in a little bit different way than most people will do. I assume all of us are looking for some of the basics in life, uh, a good place to live, a, uh, a good income to work with, and uh, money for children's education. That sounds easy enough. That sounds... Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. That sounds like what everybody wants. Yeah, man. Yeah, I would, I would hope so. When I was uh, when I was young, I was a, a, a member of the Paul Model Soap Foundation, and uh, my grandfather went out and uh, used to push carts in Dayton, Ohio, to pick up grease to make soap. My mother grandmother uh, actually would, could not stand the smell of the grease, so she went behind his back and put perfume into the soap. All of a sudden, we had probably the best seller in the marketplace because it was perfumed soap. And uh, for 15 years, he uh, made a whole lot of money. Wow. He had uh, 13 sons and daughters, and every year he used to give them a brand-new vehicle, which was Model T back then, Whoa. and uh, put them in school. But when they turned 18, he kicked them out of the house and said, you know the, you know the tools, you have, you have the ideas of how to make money, it's up to you from now on. And in retrospect, that was probably the best thing that uh, he ever did for us. Every one of them made plenty of money and had a great time. So when I was growing up, I got a chance to uh, be in the same kind of a background. But my parents already had made their money. So uh, they were uh, they were making all kinds of rules to me, which I didn't like back in the, in the uh, 70s, on uh, how to spend my money, where, what to do in school, what kind of uh, education I should get. And at 15, I decided to leave. I went into the um, world of, back and then, peace and love. And uh, I started uh, making leather belts. We found a special way to make the belts with a, a, a kind of leather that wasn't used before. We uh, started making purses, dresses, and so forth. And uh, we weren't selling them. We had uh, all this stack of leather that was out there and i just went out to uh, one of the big stores in town called macy's you probably all heard of it i went and showed some of my stuff to them and we had a thirty thousand dollar order and this is back in 1972 when that was like a million dollars so we spent the wow. next three years doing this leather business and i just had a ball doing it and everybody loved what i made so uh it was a it was a great time to to grow up in uh, you know, there was all kinds of changes of attitudes, and and uh, my my parents could not believe that I was making that much money off of hanging around in blue jeans and ragged pants. <laughs> so uh, we had a, we had a great time doing this. Uh, we decided that uh, when we started hearing about San Francisco, that we should get in the Volkswagen bus, my uh, my wife and I, and drive out to San Francisco. We went out there, and I uh, went to college for a while, and we decided that uh, we would uh, put on uh, shows of the rock and roll that was going on. All of them was brand new to everybody. So people like uh, Jefferson Starship, uh, oh, Paul Simon, a bunch of, bunch of different people uh, in the rock and roll world uh, lived in San Francisco. Uh, Carlos Santana just a bunch of them so we were able to do this for a little money and everybody you know all the free concerts that were going on back then we had a great time we actually made a little money doing that but at that time i became 18 years old 
and I decided I needed to do something serious. God help me. Uh, we uh, we went out looking for jobs, and I got an interview with uh, a company called Mutual of New York. Uh, uh, they were going to give me $1,500 a month, which is a whole lot of money back then. And I went to work for them, and I found that I had a knack for selling. I enjoyed talking with people. I enjoyed being with people. I was an extrovert. And we just went to making a lot of money at Mutual of New York. I did uh, financial planning for corporations. And luckily, my parents gave me a strong mathematic and uh, uh, business background watching them work when I was a kid. So while I was doing this, I was making a lot of money. But in San Francisco, I lived in a small little house, 800 square feet. And the price was phenomenal. And I really wanted to do something else because all I was doing was keeping up with everybody else in the neighborhood by uh, just making my mortgage payment and paying my uh, car payment. All right. So you said phenomenal or astronomical? San Francisco. Uh, 400000 for an 800 square foot home was pretty much astronomical. Yeah. Ooh. It's no better nowadays, I hear. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's had its ups and downs, but still that house that I used to own is now worth a million dollars. Wow. And I living it. Too small. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, anyway uh, to, to just kind of pass through this, how I got into real estate. I uh, started listening to uh, people in back in the late 70s and early 80s doing seminars on how to buy houses. And they were saying things that you, you just wouldn't believe. How to buy houses, no money down. How to uh, make a million dollars in real estate in less than 16, 16 months. And all these things were done by the, the, the kingpins of the time. Robert Allen, Harold Harrison, Paul Simon, Dave Dodato. They were all uh, great speakers. I went to a seminar in Tahoe. And when I heard what they said, and they gave me the math on the, on the chalkboard, it made sense to me. And don't ask me why, but for some reason it just clicked. I went backstage and I said I wanted to have an interview. Uh, to uh, to work for them, and I, I I was astounded to hear that if I was to have a uh, seminar interview, I needed to pay a thousand dollars up front. And you know what? I was just crazy enough to do it, and it was the best thing I ever did. Uh, we, uh, in fact, I used to brag about having to pay for my job in every seminar I did from them. For the next seven years, I worked in the seminar business. Uh, we would talk, we'd go into a city, uh, probably went to about 28 cities and mostly the western and southern states. And we did seminars about how to buy houses, no money down. And the more I got into it, the better I got at it, of course. We used to go to uh, the seminar, I would turn on the telephone, and I would pick uh, ads in the paper of houses for sale. In Phoenix, Arizona, uh Albuquerque, New Mexico, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, uh, New Orleans. We went all the way across to Mississippi, Atlanta, Georgia, and then to Florida. And uh, we went, and then we, of course, go back again. We would have a weekend seminar, and I would uh, bring in a phone with a big speaker, and I would buy homes on the telephone. And everybody was so astounded. I gave the, I gave the, uh, the offers to anybody in the seminar who wanted to buy one. And I already set up the contract for them, and they went out. Most of them got the houses exactly like I showed. Wow. So it was it was, a, it was an amazing time, but any time that you look at real estate, if you find the right market, you'll find the right deal. And we all know that, that prices in whatever area you live in do go up and down, but mostly they go up. And the key is to find the right area, the right time, and the right price. So if you can if you can get your rent equal to your mortgage, then you've got a great market to work in. Dude, I got a buddy of mine. He's a computer friend of mine, but he's a genius just in a whole bunch of different things. Real estate's one of them. He found out that there was a hospital going into um, a, a town, and they were going to build it in the next five years. So he, he bought a house... Uh, just a few blocks from where the hospital was being built. 
and his yes. his property value because doctors wanted to live there whoever everybody wanted to live close to the hospital i think he tripled his house value just because that hospital came in and, and that's, that's exactly the way to do it he and didn't he didn't want to different. live there he just wanted to buy it for three years so he could have that investment and i was like what yeah he should have bought 20 of them <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I, will, I, will you, I will tell you that Tesla is, is opening a um, 40,000 square foot factory here in Austin this year. And what he did was he went out and bought every house he could find in the surrounding area. He bought three shopping centers. And now what he's doing is like they did in the old days. They're having, they have a community that's all Tesla employees. So he's bought the houses at a certain price. He set them up just like IBM has done to where they can move in without any money down, and he owns the property. Wow. And so at the two, and then they stay two years, they get they get part ownership. They stay five years, they get full ownership. So it's a, it's a, there's just one of the ideas that you want to have in your mind about how to make the house work best for you when you buy one. So we did about 300,000 miles a year. Uh, I did this for about six years, and... Uh, I finally moved to a place called Orlando, Florida. And during this time, uh, I was real good at at uh, talking about seminars, but I hadn't really gone out there and done anything. So the guy I was working with, Robert Allen, said, I want you to go out there and buy houses yourself, bring me the contracts, and let's bring some money into the corporation. I said, fine, I'll try anything. And they sent me to Dallas, Texas. Now, people who don't know anything about Texas, back in that time in the 80s, they didn't know what a second mortgage was. They really didn't know what a third mortgage was. And they only knew everybody come in with 25% down and take over the mortgage or buy your own mortgage. So I went to Dallas thinking that I was that this would be an easy job. And I got there, and three weeks later, I had submitted 28 contracts. And I got doors slammed in my face. I got people yelling at me. I got people calling me crazy. I had a couple of guns pulled out, which I left the homes very quickly. <laughs> and uh, I learned I learned that that was not going to look quite work in Dallas. So what I did was I sat down and figured out what it would do if somebody didn't take all their money from a tax situation. Then I did the second smartest thing in my life. I took my wife and made her come with me. And it took all the heat off of knocking on the door being a stranger. Ah. Uh, because she, she looked sweet. She did a good job. And she smiled a lot. So uh, I went to the doors and knocked on them. And I said, look, if you don't take all this money, but you carry a second note, it's like passive income. You will make income off of it that is tax-free. And you will not have to pay sales tax on selling the house for full price. And it actually started to work, but it took 64 more contracts to get it done. Wow. At any rate, wow. They had a good time doing this, but then all of a sudden something very unusual happened. I was talking with people about real estate every day. And a guy came up to me and said, you know, I know where there's seven houses that you can buy for $15,000 a house. I said, they must be in the ghetto. He said, no, they're, they're in a good part of Dallas. And I went out to look at them, and I found out right away when I looked at them what it was. The houses were bent in half. Uh, they had the slabs had cracked. The ground was dry around them, and uh, they had they were being sold for fifteen thousand by FHA. Nobody wanted to buy them. They'd been up there for a year, and it was funny because I started talking about the problem to people, and a plumber came up and said, "Let me show you what to do." And all of a sudden, the magician that's just like Wes came out of nowhere with a rubber hose and a, and a spigot and went out there and drilled 43 holes in each house. He took the spigot and poured water into them, and overnight, within two days, the slabs had gone level again. What? And I've used, that, I've used that one for building houses and buying houses for the last 15 years. Is the best thing I ever learned. I paid him a thousand dollars, and I wish I'd ever given him more. Well, I, explain I, to me I, what happened. What did the he filled it with water and it refixed the slab because it was cracked well, and dried out? Here, here's basically what it was: the, 
the grass around the houses was not watered. So in, in uh, Texas, you have shell, uh, shell of, of foundation, um, what do you call it, shell rock underneath you. Okay. And, and so what happens is if it dries out, the shell shifts. So when they shift, the house would crack. And once, once you've got the foundation gone, then the roof goes. Once the roof goes, everything deteriorates. So we found that in putting water back underneath it, it floated the ground back up to level. Wow. The next thing we had to do was put grass right next to the curb of, of the house, all around the house. And we watered that grass like every day for two weeks. By the time we finished, we went up there and sealed the roof. We fixed all the cracks with good paint and, uh, and you know, uh, paint and cut and paste. And we had houses that we sold for 45000 a piece. Wow. And that was back in the 80s, but it was the best money I ever made in four weeks. In it was, four uh, weeks. It was tough. It was hard work in the, in the Texas sun. But I, I learned something about it. Uh, and the one thing that I've got to tell you, the rule that I say for the first step of building blocks for success is remember that only restriction that you have on real estate is the use of your imagination. Yeah. I, 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 it's, that was beyond my imagination. I wouldn't have been able to come up with that one. I don't care if the <laughs> house was 50 bucks. If it was crooked and falling apart... Natalie wouldn't let me buy it. What I used to do is I used to go to, to craft homes, craft the foundations, and I, I used to make bets with the real estate agents. And they ended up losing their commission over me because it always worked. And when you think about it, as long as you have a, a, a good, strong ground underneath that doesn't move or dry up, the slab will hold the house and the weight of the house. So with their mortgage, are they told that they need to water their house often? Nobody knows this, and, it, and you see it all the time. In, in uh, Houston, Dallas, Austin, you see houses cracked all the time. In, uh, in New Mexico, you see them all the time. In Arizona, it's, it's dry to begin with, so they don't. They use cinder block, which probably is the reason why they don't crack. But uh, when you go to Florida, you have what they call floating foundations because, the, uh, because of the, the mud and the sinkholes. So you've got different things you have to do. Every every state has a different thing that causes houses to deteriorate. If you find that, sometimes the best deals that you can find is going where nobody else wants to go. Hmm. Wow. I wonder what does it in Virginia. <laughs> uh, in Virginia, you know, I tell you what, call me up next week and I'll come on down. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, it, it's a, I have I have uh, done three loans in Virginia for friends of mine who are in the military, and uh, we found that uh, that you there's there's always a way that you can get around the problems if you understand what the problem is. We had a problem with uh, with uh, some kind of mold or something they had there, and we found that Clorox got rid of the mold, which I'd never heard of before until somebody somebody I went on to Google and I looked for Google about how to get rid of mold. And sure enough, one guy who'd been around 20 years as a painter said, use this combination of, of uh, Clorox and uh, and some, uh, I don't know what, I forget what the other part was. But it got rid of the mold 100%. And yet, when you go to a contractor to fix it on mold, there are ten twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth. It's amazing. Wow, Yeah. That's so there's all know. kinds of things that you learn if you if you stay in the field that you know. So uh, let's let's talk about block number two. Uh, real estate has many avenues of tried and true guaranteed returns. My grandfather was uh, was after he sold a house to Colgate uh, was going to the went to the stock market every day for 15 years, and he always whenever I asked him which one was the best to invest in. He said, don't even bother. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm having fun seeing how much money I didn't lose. Huh. And to me, that was the smartest thing I ever heard from him. Huh. Wow. Uh, the, the, the point, I guess, to say is that, that the stock market is a great animal 
But if you think that you can figure out what emotion does to the stock market, you're crazy. And I have to tell you that for the most part, it is based on management, number one. Number two, on the, the, the feeling that the public has about the company and news articles and how they're, take, how they're taking it. If they think there's a weak manager coming in, your stocks will go down. If you have strong investment management, then you have a good chance. And yet still, if you see that the inflation comes in or deflation comes in, you'll see people lose all the time. Uh, yeah, I just heard a thing the other day about Apple giving out the brand new products to certain people in the um, industry, like in the media. And, you know, if they if they say a bad thing about it, well, they're not on the freebie list anymore. So they always want they always want to say great things. So they get the Apple before everyone else. Oh, so and it's, and they, get the, they get the best ones, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like I don't know. You can't do insider trading, but that sounds kind of. Shady. That doesn't sound cool. Well, it's, you're, you're, you're stacked in the deck is what you're doing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and they do it all the time. But, you know, a, a simple thing about about um, investing in the stock market, a friend of mine had a, um, what you call a, um, uh, when you have uh, your headhunter business. Uh-huh. And uh, one of the head of Merrill Lynch uh, called him and said, look, why don't you buy some of your own stock at a higher price? And he said, what, are you crazy? He said, no, just go ahead and do it and see what happens. He bought his own stock, and he increased the value across the board. Everybody thought there was a run on it, and so he doubled his money overnight. Wow. So even though that did not hit the SEC arena for uh, violations, it was close. But because of the way he did it, uh, through other people's names, it did never hit. So all of that is a great thing if you're really familiar with the marketplace, but do not work in an area of investment that you do not know. I have to, I have to tell you real simple, uh, every time I've ever gotten in trouble is when I tried something that I didn't understand. And real estate, the nice thing about it is it's real simple. You buy a house, you find somebody to rent it out, or you live in it yourself, you wait for the price of a pair of tennis shoes to go up, which means your house value will go up, and you sell it at a profit. And for all the ups and downs we've had in the real estate market through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it always rebounds. You can't say that about stock. You can't say that about bitcoins. You can't say that about pyramid schemes. And uh, so you guess I'm kind of, I have to tell you, I'm kind of sold on real estate, obviously. No, well, I mean, if that's how you make, I'm, I'm sold on magic. If that's how you make your money, yeah. man, you, I mean, that's, yeah. So yeah. Let's go on to block, let's go on here to block two. Um, I hope, hopefully I can get all this in before the hour's out. Well, hey, we're at 22 <laughs> minutes already, so. Uh... All right. Well, that's, I'll move a little faster. <laughs> hey, you're good, you're good. Whatever, the, the second block for building success is whatever investment vehicle you use, don't get involved in overnight sensations, which I just basically said. Uh, no matter what, always make sure there is a real value and a historic value in what you buy. Okay? Yeah. The, the, main, the main thing is, is that real estate has at least 11 different avenues to invest in. All of them are based on real estate. Fannie Mae bonds are done based on real estate that are sold in the stock market. You can buy those because you are, have houses as the value of investment, as their, their equity. Okay. That's, a, that's, that's a one way to do it. You can buy notes, second mortgages, third mortgages on a house at a superior discount. When people need money and they have a big note, I've gone down to buying them at 30 cents on the dollar, 35 cents on the dollar. You can take that, hold it for six months, make sure that the payments are being made on time, and all of a sudden you have an asset you can sell at 80% of value. Wow. I've done about 115 of those and always made money on them. If you uh, decide to buy a mortgage from Fannie Mae or FHA or in the marketplace, you can buy a mortgage. You can get passive income from that house. 
And the best thing about it is if they miss the payments, you can always take the house over for a small amount of the mortgage when it's worth always twice what the mortgage is for all intents and purposes. There's a thing called contract for deed. Contract for deed means that you don't change the owner of the property, but you make an agreement that is done with a title company and you agree to pay so much per month for so many years before you purchase it or until the mortgage is paid off. I've made a lot of money without risking any credit or damage. If the house went bad, I could always walk away from it with a contract for deed. Wow. Okay, there's there's no money down. And I'll give you my example of what we did with Robert Allen. He would come into a house with 60000 with a 20000 mortgage. People who lived there about seven or eight years, maybe, maybe 15 years, and the market had not gone up in value much. A lot of people wanted to get out of the house and move to something else after 10 years, obviously. He would come in and suggest that they take a second mortgage on the house for 20000 and use that to pay themselves. This was the owner of the house buying the mortgage, the second mortgage. He, of that, he would take $5,000 for showing them how to do it, and he would give them a note for a third mortgage, the 20000 that was left, for five years with no payments, or five years with 5% interest rate. He had a house now that was bought for no money down. He made $5,000 when he bought the house, and he was able to come back five years later, four years later, and every year he would send a Merry Christmas card out. Do you want to sell your note at a discount? So he would find many times people would take a discount on the third mortgage he made on the house for 10000 15000 instead of twenty. Wow. And that was without any risk of the purchaser's credit or having to qualify. So there are other ways. There are several other ways to do it. I'll try to go through this fast. If we, if anybody to this seminar wants to find out more about these properties and the way we do them, I'm going to give, uh, at the end of the seminar, my email address. You're welcome to, uh, to do it. I won't charge anything to... Uh, to just give you some answers and get you welcomed into the world of real estate. The next one I'm going to say that is very, very exciting is called conversion of real estate. Okay. For instance, you can take three, three houses that are right next to each other. As long as you build, if you own all three properties, you can build in between you to the houses and turn it into a small apartment complex. You can take apartments and turn them into condos or townhomes. You can take a large apartment complex that you could do what I did. I took four houses that I owned and traded for a 15-unit apartment complex. I then divided it into half, sold half, and kept the other for an investment, which was a lower price and sold within five days because of the price and the income from the apartments. So there's just, the only thing again that you have limited in you is is what you don't think of. Uh, I will tell you that uh, motels are a great idea if you find the right areas. If you understand the rules about motels. If you take houses in an area that is mixed, commercial and residential, it has high value. And I think everybody has at least seen one block in their neighborhood that has doctor's offices and houses next to each other. Uh, Houston is just like that all over the town of Houston. What that does is double your double your value when you convert it to a commercial property. Yeah, again, you have to know the rules. Okay. Um, I just there's not any questions now. Anything that you'd like to say? I have to. This? I'm gonna have to listen to this thing six more times to even get all this, man. We. Well, I, I, a lot of information. Oh man, there's a lot of information. Too, I don't want to get too specific, but I just want to give people the ideas 
of the value of doing real estate investing. But let me tell you the most important thing that you can ever do in investing in any product is know your product. Robert Allen made me go out and look at 100 homes before I made my first contract. That took me four weeks. But I'll tell you what it did. It didn't tell me what I liked. It showed me what I wouldn't want to buy, what neighborhoods I did not want to go into, what kind of problems made the houses look raggedy. And I think it's the best rule I can give to anybody before they buy a house. If you know what you don't want, the, the ones that, that you do want will, will pop up and you'll hear a bell every time. Okay, let's, let's move away from real estate just a minute. What happens when you make all this money on real estate? What do you do? The most important thing you can do is make sure that you do a plan in advance. How much money you want to make, make your goals for the next three years. Then break it down to one year, then break it down to monthly. And all you got to do is divide to make this work for you. This will give you a month-by-month way to watch and see how your investments and income is coming. If you watch your money, the money will watch you. Because the most the most amazing thing that happens with all new businesses in America, 75% of them fail because they don't keep their books. Or they keep uh, bad books. Yeah. Or they, or they don't pay attention to what they're doing. I mean, I, I, I make it like this. I save every receipt I ever have. I do everything on credit card so I can make a copy of what I spent. I don't carry cash, which <laughs> that's what they want you to do anyhow. And and, and I, I watch my money at the end of the month. And I see if I'm making too much. If I'm spending too much money uh, buying tennis shoes, I quit buying tennis shoes. Because I can see I bought seven pair in one month. Oh, my. And then and I know I have, I'm, an, I'm a tennis shoe freak. <laughs> uh, the, next thing, <laughs> the next thing I want to tell you is, Make sure that you pay yourself first. What do I mean by that? Let me just say America has less than 25% savings per capita in the entire United States. Less than 25% of all Americans save money. And the second thing is you always spend what you make. That's America. I'm sorry. That is that is most countries in this world we know. In Japan, they have a 90% tax law. Oh. And they still send, they still save more money than any American I know. They wow. open up restaurants, they, they, they live five people to a house, whatever it takes, but they always have money. Wow. The way you can do this, very I... simply, very, this is the most important thing I can say about this. Get two accounts set up. Have your paycheck put into one and start at 10% and ask your banker to set it up So the second account draws every month automatically on the 25th or whatever is good for you, 10% out without any saying more than a simple um, transfer. And they do it automatically. If you don't see the money, you won't spend it. But is that a a set amount? I mean, as an entertainer, I might make, you know... So if you make, if 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 you put in there... I might have a good month and I might have a slow month. Would it take out the same each month or would your, it be 10% of my total? Do your averages. Okay. Do your average. If your average is $2,000 a month, put, put 10%, which is how much? 200 200 into that other account. If you fall short, let me tell you something interesting. Don't you always manage, no matter what, to pay your bills? You know what? We just got through, uh, well, we're not through it, but 2020, man. I don't know how it happened. I have no idea how we got through it. But you did it because that is your drive in America is to pay what you owe. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somehow, I've got, I went out and got three jobs before to pay my bills and did not stop my savings program. But this is what's called paying yourself. If you, Everybody pays themselves last in America. They pay the bills first, the doctor second. And then themselves last. And by the time they get there, there's nothing left. But if you pay yourself first, you say, I only got this to spend, guess what? 
you start thinking smarter. Mm. Yeah, our yeah. little girl. I mean, it's easy for us to set up stuff like that for my little girl. I, I make her but do... That, that, that's how my kids got to college. Yeah, okay? I, I make her put you money know? away in, in, a, in a savings, a vacation fund. Yeah. Um, there you go. I, I split up her money, yeah. And, and what you do is you, you go ahead and do a regular savings, and you, and you do that religiously, but you never look at the money you put in here until you get ready to take a kid to college, and then you better have it. <laughs> yeah. I got three coming in 20 years. There you go. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so the next thing I want to go over these quickly because I don't want to run out of time. We have many ways to protect your assets. It's the most important thing that you can do once you own something. I have a rule. I don't own anything in my name. Why? Because I had an audit one year for 300000 with the IRS. That was, But I luckily was ready for it. They tried for six years to get money from me. They did not know where my assets were. There are, there are the following things available to you for protection. You have to work them, but you have to understand them too. You can look them up on Google. The first one is a 501c3 trust. This is a non-taxable company. You have to have reasons to set it up, but it's all easy to go over. I'll be glad to give anybody the information they need. This is set up to where you do not pay taxes on the money you make. You can take out $1,500 stipend, which is for research and development, without being taxed. You can pay for your bills without being taxed. Corporations do this not quite as well. But a, 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 a full corporation pays your bills as part of your agreement with the corporation. Limited partnerships splits the risk up. You can do a partner with another guy, but be careful of partnerships. Know your person you're dealing with. And the best thing I can, the best one I can tell you is it's a little complicated, but it's called three flag theory. As long as you're removed from your vehicle of, of, of value three times, nobody can find who the owner is. And again, I'll be glad to go over that in, uh, in line with people who are now owning property or that want to find out more about it. It basically means you remove yourself three times from the actual investment. And you still have 100% ability to control the investment. That's like you're talking a whole other language. How do I remove myself from my investment but still have ownership? A corporation is in the corporation name. It's not your name. Okay, okay. A 501c3 trust is owned by you, but maybe you don't show that you own it. You're just the trustee. You have the right to sell, buy, reduce, rent, or whatever for the trust, but the trust owns it. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Does that make any sense? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Moving yourself, when when they looked at my trust and saw that my great-grandchildren had already been born yet, were the recipients of my assets, they could not touch it. And and they went through uh, three years of trying to get them. Could not touch them. Wow. Never owned anything that you own in your personal name, Okay. Never show the and, and here's rule four: never show the world what you got. If they can't see it, they can't take it away. And I tell you that many times I've been sued because people knew I owned property. They tried to find my assets and they got really frustrated. Yeah, I mean, uh, millionaires, billionaires get hit every single day because they know they have it. And let me tell you something, John Connolly, was, was, who was with President Kennedy when he died, had $41 million worth of a bankruptcy. But he didn't mention the five trusts he had was $61 million. They were all given to his kids before he ever filed bankruptcy. That's just a, that's a crazy uh, number there, but it's actually a fact. All right, so let's just, now let's move forward on this. Any, do you have any other questions that you can think of, Wes? No, I, no I'm, trying, I'm trying to take it all in. I know I'm going to have to re-listen to this just to get some stuff and yeah. ask you questions well, later. We got 20 sure. minutes of the podcast left. You go for it. All right, all right so let's continue on. There are, there are at least 15 different ways to invest in real estate. I'm just going to name them, and we can go back to them later. Duplexes, 
single family homes, mortgage notes, partnerships with other people, property sales tax. You can buy strips of land and sell them to the owners next door to them or make them fight over it. That's You'd be amazed how many strips of land are in between houses that are owned by the city. And they, they auction them off all the time. You can convert a home from, from a regular residential home to commercial. There's three simple steps. But I'll, well, again, we can go into those later. You can buy apartments, like I said earlier, by combining homes and trading equity. There's a thing called equity transfer. We'll talk about that another time. You can convert a single family home, if you have a large enough lot, into a duplex. Because you use the same plumbing, the same electricity, you just have to crank up the, the voltage on the electricity. And all the same all the same trash and everything else. All right, if you have a house with a garage, why not build a second story on there and get uh, two apartments out of it? Then you can go, uh, what, I, what I talked about earlier, about converting apartments to condos or townhouses. You can double your money when you do the conversion. It's a little bit lengthy, but it is well worth the money. All right, and then what you do is you can convert a apartment to three separate complexes and then sell them for more money for each one than you did if you sold it as a whole, okay? All right, I'm with you. I'm fo- right, so I have notes. I'm following along. That's the only way I'm okay. able to follow along. <laughs> well, we should have said that to begin with to everybody. But again, I'm happy to go with this anytime with anybody. Rule five, the only limitation you face is the kind, with the kind of real estate you do, is guess what? Your imagination. There you go. There you go. Now you're on the front page. All right, we're at block six now. Make sure you play as hard as you work. It's a, it's a one rule I made for myself, and it's always worked for me. I make sure that I take time away from it so I can get perspective. I make sure that I have people that work under me who can take care of things when I'm just sick of looking at houses, which it does happen. I, when I don't want to uh, uh, evict anybody from my house, I get somebody else to do it for me. But make sure that you enjoy yourself and your life as much as you do enjoy your work. Because if you don't, you'll end up living by yourself. I promise you. Well, that's where I'm lucky with magic. You know, Natalie's pointing at me when you said that. Because, you know, every day I'm loving it, man. Well, you know, that's that's why the boss is always the woman, okay? (laughs) She said I don't take enough vacations. She's talking under her breath. She says I don't take enough vacations. Well, there you are. And amen to that. I'm loving it. So... So you know what to do, don't you, Natalie? No. He's stubborn. I use can't get him finger. out. Huh? Just like your mother did. If, it, if the finger doesn't work, use the broom. Okay? Oh, okay. All right. I'll have there to try that. I, I think I'm to the broom stage. That, uh, I think that sometimes you need to. Because <laughs> men are stubborn once they get into a, 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 a continuing process of having to deal with things. Honestly, I have left things in a jumble and a mess and come back and sometimes they work better Uh, unbelievable but if you have people that work with you then sometimes they take it on instead of you taking it all on know what i mean yeah and it's just a matter of learning to use your ability to direct other people to do what you don't want to do all right there's all kinds of ways to rent homes that i haven't even talked about i'll just mention them Lease options are better than renting. Why? They think it's theirs. They take you better care of it. And sometimes only 20 to 25% ever actually do the option to buy. A renter is a renter is a renter in a lot of worlds. Okay? Yeah. In a lot of different situations. Uh, You take better care of the homes with an equity share program. You can suggest that you'll give them 20% the first year, 30% the second whatever, if they keep the house up and don't bother you, and you always make the rent on time. If they miss the rent, they lose percentage. It's a great uh, uh, property manager without you having to be there. That's what I call passive management. Mm. Okay? Make sure that you keep your perspective and humor throughout this entire process, because if you can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at anybody. 
Yep, that's true. Okay. Rule six. This is a uh, with block six. Never hold on to a home too long unless it's for the twenty five percent that you're gonna own free and clear. Let me say this another way. Keep a percentage of your property that you that it has good rent, that is a good shape, that is in a high income producing area, and pay off the mortgages with your profits. But I tell you what I did. I went to Florida and I bought so many homes I didn't know what to do, so I kept buying more. I got up to 143 homes, and all I did was live real estate. All I can tell you is I did not do anything good with the last two years I was there. And I ended up selling some of the houses for free just to get them out of, from the responsibility of them. I went to Brackenridge and skied for six months and got my sense of humor back. Mm, wow. Wow. 143. So, so what, what you have to do is you have to understand that when you own three homes, you won't have any people where anybody missing the rent. When you own five homes, you have one missing it. When you have 15 homes, you have four people missing their rent. And then you got to evict them and you got to clean them up. You got to do them again. So you be careful about the number that you take on. It's better to sell and take the cash and put them into another project that's more passive income reliable. Like apartments. Okay. And the last one that I want to tell you about is block seven. Always have a second goal. When I bought those 143 homes, my biggest problem was I had nothing else that I had to conquer. conquer. I had $2 million worth of equity. I had a half a million in the bank. And all I did was play and, and do the wrong things. Make sure that you have second goals in life with your family, your, your religion if you have it, your spirit if you don't. And make sure that you pay attention to other things besides what you do for a living. Yeah. So I'm just I'm gonna end this up. Mm-hmm. Is there any other questions you have, guys? Dude, I have to wrap my head around all this. I'm, yeah, not right now. <laughs> my, my, book, my book is coming out in January, and we've already we've already set the time limit for it. I'd be glad to get copies to anybody who wants it when it comes out. But let me just say this: all of these things are only meant to open your mind to new ideas. I have been very successful. I've been broke twice, but you know what? I never was out of money. I always had a way to make money very quickly. I always had something to where I could live in a house and not have to pay rent. Never had to pay mortgages on some of by some of the deals I made. Make sure that when you understand how to do all this, the last thing I have to say to everybody is make sure that you teach what you know to other people it is the most gratifying thing that you can do in this world is to have people make more money than you my martial arts t- teacher once told me I don't want you to, to kick me as good as I kick you I want you to do better if you can't do better you're not winning and when, when I started to, to learn how to hit him harder he said now go out and teach you know how to do it and it really helped me with a lot of people in the, in the community they are having problems with their life. There's other things that I can say to you. I'll get another two hours at this, but I, what I want to say is this, this is stage one, and these things will come back to you as you think about them. Write them down as much as you can, and make sure that you get down my email. My email address is Pete2000Widener at gmail.com. So Pete Pete Wagner Pete Wagner at Gmail. No, Pete two thousand yeah. Wagner. Two thousand Wagner at gmail dot com. Perfect. All right. And my last rule, rule seven. The joy of life comes from good works and simple kindness. And a really strong sense of humor. Because you gotta learn to laugh at yourself throughout this process because they all happen to you. And don't ever forget Murphy's Law. And all that means to anybody out there is make sure you have another plan just in case. Just like a good game of chess, always have an alternative in mind. Pete, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, man. Uh, this that, was... That, this that, that's, probably, that's probably 
probably good. Probably what I'll do next time is just take it a little bit slower. But let me just say that that this is the kind of thing that will change people's lives. And I've really enjoyed talking to everyone out there. I want to let them know that that good deeds present yourself with abilities to have great things come back at you. And that's what this is all about. So I want to wish everybody well. I want you to get Robert Allen's book from any used bookstore called Nothing Down. When you get that book, open it up and give me a call. So you just signed a book deal. When is your your book is coming out in January? Well, I have to finish it first, okay? <laughs> oh, I thought you already had a release date though. Well, I have a release date because I made I made it I, I made the release date, so I had to finish the book. Gotcha. Because I've been trying to say this, I was going to do this for ten years. I wrote one book by just putting together ten out uh, hundred contracts that I made on houses. That was easy. This one requires you to to read and make sure that you make stuff clear. Anything that isn't clear, I'd like to know about simply because it'll help me in writing the book. Well, here's the thing: we just um, I'm always checking stats for this podcast. We have listeners in 32 different countries now. What countries have what countries have you sold real estate in? Just America? No, I've been in America, probably in uh, forty two states so far, including Hawaii. I had a ball there. Uh, I went to Mexico, and I did it in Mexico City, the Day Fe, as they call it, said a rally. Uh, I did it in some of the condo resorts and in uh, Baja, California, and I went to South America in three countries. And I found that no matter what, there is a basis of of money and property that you can make work. Some of it requires lines of credit. Some of it requires a letter of credit from a bank. Some of it requires all cash. Some of it requires gold. It's amazing. People people have different uh, different standards they work with. But always there is a way to come to a meeting of the minds about investment, purchase, and sale. Wow. Dude, you're you're awesome. I just want to let everybody know that, you know, we've been talking to you. We have our own stuff that you're helping us with. I, I don't want to get into all that. But you, we've been talking to you every single week, probably for the past oh, five months, months, five months, three months, yeah, something five. like that. Yeah. And... Um, we were referred to you by uh, Tom Julian, the owner of uh, Jewel TV, and um, he gave you glowing recommendations, told me we had to talk to you, and uh, everything you've told us, everything you've done, you've come through for us, and um, you're awesome, dude, and well, you know what I you're talking you. about, so uh, thank you for doing our podcast, man. You're awesome. Well, I had fun doing this, and I, and I welcome, uh, if you have a second need for me to come back anytime to help explain it better. I welcome you to, to call me, okay? This, well, is, this is great stuff for everybody to know because in these circumstances, in COVID, you've got to find other ways to make money. The regular ways don't, just don't work as well. We've become a lower class because we cannot make the money we used to make. Well, and all of my entertainer friends, I mean, they won't let you work. So you got to do something. Yeah, you better do something. You yeah. Better right. Yeah. And, and remember, remember, Imagination is what it's all about. I love it. I love it. All right. You were awesome, Pete. Hey, stay on the all line, right. man. We're gonna. I'm gonna do a couple plugs and uh, stay on the line, and um, uh, we'll wrap everything up. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So, guys, that was uh, Peter Wagner, and um, check him out. What was it, Natalie? Pete two thousand. Uh huh. Wagner at gmail.com yep. uh, send him your questions guys if you have real estate questions or um, business questions send them to him he'd be happy to help you and um, we are so happy to announce that our new show merch is now available at wesisley.com that's logo t-shirts my magic tv podcast t-shirts magic man hats stickers playing cards and more check it out at wesisley.com and season two of Wes Isley's Magic Life is over, but you can still binge watch all the episodes of season one and two on Jewel TV. Jewel TV is on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, the Jewel TV app, and tons of other places. It's in over 100 million households. All you have to do is look for it. See, See you next week. week.
Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Express Copy and Graphics. Mention promo code Wes Isley to get 10% off. Their website is expresscopy.com. That's X-P-R-E-S-S dash C-O-P-Y dot com. They do it all. Copies, banners, signs, vehicle wraps, promo items, practically anything you need printed, they can do it for you. These guys are great. Check them out. Check us out online at wesisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scenes videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I.